All right, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nadia. I'm a teacher at Bucky Lab, and today I will be giving you pitch training. Um, before we start, I would actually like you guys to watch a link first. It's the TEDx talk by Simon Sinek. He talks about the golden circle, about the buildup of a specific, really um, powerful pitch. And we've added the link in the description below. So first off, I would like you guys to watch that and then come back after you've seen this. So pause this video and head over to the TED talk. See you guys later. All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you've watched the TED talk and um, I'm gonna explain to you guys how this is gonna help you prepare a really powerful pitch. So you've heard Simon Sinek uh, in this specific TED talk talk about uh, specifically the why, how and what of your specific story. Today we're going to be focusing on the why and the how. What is usually very, very specific, and this is actually what you're going to be making at a later stage uh, in the Bucky Lab. So for now, it's really important to uh, focus specifically on why you're making something. So that's actually the problem statement. What kind of problem are you trying to solve? This is what you start with. After that, you tell us um, how you're gonna solve that specific problem. And you're going to end with a call to action for other students to join you within researching your specifically really great concept throughout the rest of the Bucky Lab. Um, the reason why we're asking you guys to start with your why is that the problem is always most interesting. If you can convince someone that it's a, a really urgent problem or um, that your specific solution for it can help solve a really, really big problem, then if that problem is big enough and people are enthusiastic enough to follow you in solving that specific problem, then your how, so what your concept is in how to solve that specific problem, is of less importance. If that one is not completely finished, if, you, if it's still like a first concept or a first drawing, we can still say, well, I mean, your concept isn't great because we've worked on it for only three weeks, um, but your problem statement's really interesting and this is something I want to be working on. So you can actually uh, ask other students to help you solve that problem and you already have given them a first direction on how to solve that, but you still give a bit of leeway and freedom for other students to actually give their own input into solving that problem. Um, and it doesn't really matter if the details are a bit vague or if your solution is not fully formed yet. This is actually why we're asking you to present in this such a manner. If you've really cleared for yourself, what is your problem? How are you going to solve that? What is your concept? I would always advise, firstly, to write down a complete pitch. So write down your story, write it out in full on paper. And then after you've written it down, you're gonna time it to be one minute. This is really important. You're probably gonna have to scratch or add a bit more. Uh, and I would always time it to be at a maximum of 50 or 55 seconds. Um, this is important because in real life stuff can happen, you can have a, a couple of ums in your presentation and you would still uh, hit that one minute mark. We're going to be quite strict on that actually. So um, write everything down. The moment that you've done that, you're going to pick keywords from your text which are important. So what keyword for your problem, what, what keywords in your text describe your problem best, what keywords in your text describe your how, so what kind of concept you have best. Write down those keywords, have only those keywords in hand. And this is where the really uh, important part is, rehearse. So with those keywords, you're gonna rephrase up to five times your pitch in a different way. So you're gonna use different kind of sentences for the same story. This is always a part that students find a bit, um, a bit difficult, time consuming, and they don't always understand the reason why. And the reason why is that Everyone has known that moment that you start your presentation and you've really, you've learned it by, by heart uh, and you only know one way to start. And the moment that that first sentence doesn't really come out the way it should and you've lost your second sentence, then your whole pitch goes up in flames and we only have one minute. Therefore, if you've rehearsed it already with a couple of different sentences, your brain works in such a way that if it can't grasp that first sentence, it will always hit on that second or third or fourth or fifth. So it sort of um, pre-stresses, how do you say, it takes the stress out of uh, your, your final pitch because you know you're prepared and you know you've had, you have all of your sentences ready. Um, so uh, write it down, keywords, practice. 
And then after you've practiced, um, you're going to check if your story is still comprehensible for other people. So I would always advise you to, um, to present your story to your parents, to your little brother, to your neighbor, or perhaps fellow students, um, and ask them specific feedback. How did I do? Was I convincing? Uh, what is the story I'm trying to tell? Um, and do they understand the story? Maybe you've scraped out so much that there's not a, a full storyline there. Uh, so get a bit of feedback from the people around you. So if you've done this, you've quite prepared yourself for a one minute pitch. Um, this is like the basis. Then I've also got a couple of tips and tricks for either uh, presenting digitally or if you're presenting in the flesh, in a hallway like this specifically. It can be always a bit intimidating um, presenting in front of a very large audience with a lot of people. So I have a couple of tips and tricks on how to handle that. But first I would like you guys to see how to present digitally. For this year's semester at Bucky Lab, we're asking you guys to pitch in front of a screen to other people who are watching with you digitally. And it can be really, really difficult to come across a screen as lively, as convincing, as you're missing that direct feedback um, from like a live audience. There's always something missing. And it's rarely as dynamic as you are in front of a, a real live audience. So the tips and tricks for digitally presenting are, first off, it's important that you present with passion. That means that you have to use your hands a lot. I'm trying to gesticulate throughout this presentation. I have a booklet in hand. I wouldn't advise that actually. Put the booklets and everything away and try to be convincing. You can always lay a sheet in front of you with your keywords, something in the back of your brain, but try to use your hands. Secondly, I would always advise standing up because standing up means that you're in a more active position. You're easier to be convincing and people are more likely to listen to you the moment that you move around a little bit. Um, thirdly, it's quite important that you look towards, if you're standing up, what is my background? Is there a lot of destruction in my background? Or could I place my laptop in such a way that I'm with my back uh, towards windows, which have a really calming background? Or perhaps there's something else in the studio, like a white wall you can stand in front of. Um, so do your preparation and find a situation where you are comfortable with your laptop, standing up, giving your pitch, and you can sit down after you finished presenting actually. Um, so I think for the, the Zoom call specifics, um, there's of course always tips and tricks that are useful for both digitally presenting and uh, presenting live. This has to do with the language that you use. I would always advise to use positive language. So um, come join me within my team. I'm really enthusiastic about this project. You can start even with an anecdote, your story, to really bring the, the, um, the watcher into your story. Um, I was looking to myself the other day and it really caught my attention and this brought my passion about, and I would really like to research this and this and this, something like that. If you formulate in such a way, it's easier for people to follow. The moment that you use hazardant language, I think, perhaps, who knows, this doesn't come across as strongly for a strong pitch of one presentation. I would always advise not to use too many hesitant um, words within your pitch. So that's actually for both digital and uh, for a live action audience um, if we're ever able to present again after Corona. If that moment hits, um, there's also a couple of tips and tricks on how to use a really big hallway like this. Um, so if you're in front in Zao A, uh, room A, where I'm at now, uh, it can be quite intimidating. So what I always did um, was actually advise the students of the Bucky Lab in the last couple of years, if there's a really big and impressive hallway, like for example, the Orange Hall or the Berlach Zaal or Zao A, in which you can be overwhelmed by all of the information that is already available and then all of the students as well and then you have to be within a one minute time period I would always advise go to that room before you give your pitch when everything's empty when everyone has left the building when you're alone or for example with two or three other students and give your pitch at least two or three times in that way your brain can get used to all of the information that is already here the, the big vastness of the space all of the stuff that is available here um, and your brain can already sort of store all of that information 
And the moment that you're in front and you have to present, it can ignore all of that information and focus on what is most important. Lastly, what is also nice and what I use often in my pitches and TED Talks and uh, all of the presentations that I've given is that you can use the room. So the moment that you know you have five keywords throughout your pitch, give specific, for example, furniture or something iconic in, in this specific room, give that um, one specific keyword. So for example, I'm starting on this side. I'm going to talk about why my story and gonna relate to that chair specifically there. In the second part, I'm gonna use a lectern uh, to talk about my, uh, my how and my call to action is, for example, the table that is in front of the hallway. In such a sense, you're sort of automatically going through the room and everyone feels like they've spoken to. You're not actually watching at someone specific, but you're going through the room, giving your pitch, um, and you don't really have to look at someone in the eye because sometimes that can be distracting and get you out of your concentration. So I think that's it for specific tips on um, digitally presenting, live action, language use. And lastly, there's always the one slide that you can use for the Bucky Lab um, elevator pitches. There's a couple of really out there, I think simple solutions for that slide. Don't use any text. There are to be no long sentences on your slide. Use nicely uh, visualized concept drawings, for example, or a picture of the problem, like one really, really strong image. You can give it a title. That's the only text I would advise to put on your specific slide. You can always tell in your presentation if it's really, really important. If there's too much on your slide, I'm not gonna be focusing on what you're telling. I'm going to be focusing on that specific slide. Um, which you don't want, because at the end, you want people to remember your pitch. And finally, at the end of your presentation, it's really nice if you can give a call to action. So um, you've given a, a really uh, amazing problem that you want to solve with one specific concept, and you would like other students to join you in the search for the perfect solution for that specific problem. So I think it's important to end on a positive note, on an invite, on something nice to say to the other students. And I think that's it for the elevator pitch. Aya, ah, yeah. one last tip, always start with your name. Uh, I once had to give a presentation that was one minute long for 50,000 euros. I was the only person that day that actually mentioned my own name, which is really important because people want to know you and your story, your problem and your how. So always introduce yourself and then go off with your story. This makes it a lot more personal. So those were my tips and tricks for the elevator pitch. I wish you guys all the luck in the world and we're looking forward to see what you guys come up with. See ya.